Here's something off the request line from Liberty Island. Do you want some uh, coffee, Mr. Thomas? We gotta squeeze some New Year's juice from you, Big Apple. Yes, have some. Yes, have some. Ghostbusters Radio Live. <laughs> Hello, everybody. Welcome to Ghostbusters Radio Live, a special Friday night presentation. Boy, has this been a week of fun here in the world of Yes, Have Some Podcast. My name is Craig Goldberg, and I'm not riding solo tonight. I've got a bunch of special guests, but I'm going to actually give them special introductions as we get to everybody. A little Bananarama here on WYHS Radio. Yeah. All right. Sorry. What if I just kept them uh, backstage the whole time while I just rambled? Hi, everybody. Welcome to GB Radio Live. Uh, I should look at the camera. Hi. Hi, everybody. There we go. We'll kill the music. My name is Craig Goldberg, as I mentioned. This is my third stream in a row. We did the big trailer review with YHS the other night with Abigail and Jacob and myself. Last night on the Toy Anxiety channel, it was me and Geek Dad Jay and Jacob joining us talking about toy speculation and like we like to do, we have friends of the extended YHS podcasting universe that we have to bring in to get their opinions. And then next week, we'll start it all over. We'll do, we're going to do this every week for the next five months. No, it's been great. The, um, the, the response has been awesome. There's a lot of new people coming in and finding YHS for the first time, which is amazing. We've been doing this almost eight years. So if you're new, welcome to the fold. If you're a longtime supporter, we appreciate you coming back. Make sure that you, uh, <laughs> Jacob and Zach Myers in the chat, make sure that you guys are liking this video. And make sure that you're leaving comments, interacting. And then a little bit later, I'll tell you about the amazing contest we have going on where you got to be sub to this channel to possibly win a HasLab PKE meter and Ghost Trap, courtesy of, well, yes, have some podcasts. It's not an official contest with Hasbro or Ghost Core or anything like that. We're just doing it because we love you guys. Okay, um, so a lot of people in the chat already. We're going to get to your questions and comments here in a little bit, but let me go ahead and start introducing my special guests. Now, I'm not going to do this. This isn't like a descending order. This is who I'm I'm putting in. Though We're not ranking anybody, okay? Although I do have a personal ranking of all of my friends. I keep it in a little notebook, and you know, it's much like on a Seinfeld. I change people with the speed dial, and you know, you got to keep everybody on their toes. No, I'm just kidding. I'm super excited to talk more ghost busting tonight with um, elite members of the Ghostbusters fan community. Uh, we'll, we'll put it that way. These, these, these guys are the best. Okay. So first off, I want to introduce uh, the host of the Extra Plasm podcast, one of my favorite Ghostbusters pieces of content out there on a weekly basis, a good friend of the show, Jim Meritado. Jim, hello. How are you? I'm doing great. How are you, Craig? Good. How's your week going? It's been going kind of crazy. Um, there's been lots of chat and chatter and things to talk about, but it's been kind of funny for me because I broadcast on Tuesdays and the trailer dropped on Wednesday. So as everybody else has been scrambling to cover and talk about things, I've been going, what are we going to talk about? <laughs> so <Yeah>. last, <laughs> I have time to sort of still produce an episode that'll be out next last week. Last week, Jim was like, yeah, I'm thinking about taking next week off. And I was just like, Ooh, maybe not. I don't know if this is the best <laughs> week to take off, but we're, we're, we're glad you're here, man. I can't wait to hear... Uh, your thoughts and feelings and emotions about this trailer. And uh, we'll have plenty of time to talk about extra plasma, what you guys got going on over there. Um, so thank you for being here. Next up, uh, we have uh, one of my close personal friends, artist extraordinaire, and uh, an all around, really just a genuinely nice guy. Probably too nice for the people that he associates himself with. Uh, John Yurkeva, how are you, man? <laughs> What's up, man? How's it going? Uh, even if I'm not number one, I'll take elite. That's that's a good badge to have. It's yeah, a pleasure sure. to be Absolutely. here, my friend. Absolutely. Uh, obviously, John, you, you, your wheels have been spinning already with with all of the uh, <laughs> with all of the excitement. I know you're already working on uh, art pieces, and you've done so much work for YHS over the years. You've we did the the big uh, premiere party before Afterlife. You did that amazing print. 
And uh, yeah, I'm, I'm, I can't wait to hear your thoughts because I know, John, I would say you care more about Ghostbusters than any individual human being I've ever met. <laughs> that includes anybody with the last name, you know, Reitman or Aykroyd or Goldberg. Oh, God, what are you doing? Craig, you don't. Come I just on, put my. Did you see? Did you guys see what I just did? You know, the Reitmans, the Aykroyds, the Goldbergs, you know, the top. Yeah. <laughs> Well, uh, hey, as long as you're up there too, I don't feel so uh, fish out of water. So. Well, not Craig Goldberg, but um, oh, like the go like the TV show. Go gotcha. Yeah, the Goldbergs, the television. <laughs> um, okay, and then also joining us tonight, uh, two halves of one amazing whole. These guys, <laughs> we're not going to analyze what I just said because that's a weird <laughs> sentence. But uh, <laughs> the yin and the yang. The yin and the yang. <laughs> These guys are Peanut workhorses. <laughs> uh what is happening so many things are happening <laughs> phones ring um these guys really put a ton of work into what they do for the ghostbusters community they are the owners and operators of the ghostbusters containment unit uh and uh if you need a ghostbusters autograph this is who you're gonna have to call mr tom henry and matt sanders hello gentlemen how are you hello i'm just wondering which half of the hole i am <laughs> well, that's <laughs> That might be a question for another stream. <laughs> uh, Matt, how are you, man? Man, I'm I'm doing great. Honored to be here with you guys. Yeah, man, this has been a fun week. I like, like I said, we've been doing this a long time. Um, it it used to be like, you know, in the old days, we would we would say, what would it be like if a new Ghostbusters movie came out? And now, every couple of years, we get to we get to actually live it. No more no more fantasy times. So. Um, what we'll do is, uh, I'll kind of say hi to the chat real quick and then we'll start round tabling some thoughts. Uh, this is very much a freestyle. We want to make sure everybody gets their, uh, their pre-prepared bits in. <laughs> <laughs> I got a list. Uh, I, I wrote them down. Cause I know that we, uh, we, uh, we have a lot to cover. Okay. So let's go ahead and say hi to the chat. Zach Myers, good friend of the podcast. Hello, Zach. Greg Gregory, uh, Baluda is here. Uh, Troy Benjamin in the house, Tony Taylor, AJ Quick, Orion, Andrew Bayless, all the way from Australia, the soul of the mind, Mr. Michael T, Jacob Walsh. Uh, uh, let's see who else is here. I think I said Tony Taylor, but he needs a double shout out. Okay. Cosmo is back with us. Uh, Mike Rita, JD and Jade and their thoughts. Wow. A whole group of people in that in that name that's great soul of the mind <laughs> kyle's bear alex who js joe cool is with us jason grahoski uh i always highlight this person's name i can never say it but tsukuyomi is here ghostbusters collector Tsukuyomi. yeah robinson art james vinipole and vicky horner listen we've got so much support for yhs from literally people all over the world uh and we appreciate it so thank you everybody for being here if we didn't get to your name it's not personal it's just we got a lot to cover <laughs> so we will have some open q a and commentary later um let's go ahead and round table this and get everybody's kind of initial thoughts this isn't going to be presidential debate style i'm not going <laughs> to give everybody two minutes and, and jim if you mention matt's name we are going to give him a chance to respond <laughs> uh just don't attack the moderators okay if it was a presidential debate nobody would actually listen to that two minutes they would just talk right over you <laughs> yeah, and ignore yeah. you and then talk yeah. about whatever they wanted <laughs> although we should, my time it would be fun to do a ghostbusters debate at some point i don't know what we would debate i that think everybody's fun pretty positive it would be fun days. um <laughs> but let's let's go ahead and start with you jim um you i know are we're very excited about the trailer what what were your uh, initial thoughts um i thought two things that really rung out to me like as i was watching the trailer and the first was as a person who was born and raised in new york the opening moments of the trailer of seeing like Coney Island and the Wonder Wheel just made my heart just go, we're back. We're, we're back at home. This is amazing. Um, and I, I really was just amazed at how well that opened up and sort of set the tone of like the last movie left us off with the Ecto-1 crossing the bridge, uh, like sort of the Brooklyn Bridge or whatever. And now here we are back at Coney Island, uh, you know, just a few miles away from there to sort of set up the trailer. And so that was quite a, sort of the first thing for me was I was just so excited to sort of see New York, like all of those shots that show things like the sneakers hanging off of the the uh, telephone lines and what have you, just, the, you know, the, um, the fire extinguishers pouring water into the streets are so iconically New York summer to me that I was just immediately felt at home. And the second thing is that I think it's kind of funny that we've been seeing people talk about the idea of um, how this is like going to be an extended real Ghostbusters because I don't remember real Ghostbusters ever being like tons of people might just die in this movie. 
Um, <laughs> and this, the tone of this movie sort of has this moment where it's just like, people are like, there's spikes coming out of the ground. And basically Ray Stance is like, people are going to be out there freezing to death. Um, people, there's stakes to this movie that I feel are very heavy, which I think is very cool. Um, so I'm excited about that. It's a kind of different tonal shift, I think. And I kind of look forward to what that's going to look like. Sweet. Yeah. Couldn't agree more. Um, I, I, I will say this, the, the intro music, banana Rama, amazing, right? Cruel summer, obviously from the karate kid soundtrack brings us right back to the eighties. I predicted that we would be hearing what's that one song. I, I, I'm my, I will die on the sword in this movie. We are going to hear that one old like song about, uh, what's that song about, summertime blues that's that song i think we're gonna hear that song it's kind of more of like you know i guess it's about working working all day for a dollar being a ghostbuster you guys think we might hear that song i don't know i want to have a whole soundtrack like i want to have a whole soundtrack speculation episode but that's not tonight but anyways um well jim thanks for that john oh <laughs> i know i fucked that one up jay oh cool that old song yeah. <laughs> that, one, that one old song what was oh, i know that one <laughs> It's got to be an old one. Uh, old song. John, I know old song, sure. John, what were your thoughts, man? A uh, couple thoughts. First one I had was just the pure excitement of um, of seeing Ghostbusters up and running. Like it, it, all four previous Ghostbusters movies has have to one degree or another kind of been origin stories, and right. so like I know when I was a kid this is kind of the era of Ghostbusters that I dreamed of. Like I was never someone who was like, I want to be Bang Man. I want to be Zedmore. When I was playing Ghostbusters, I was always fantasizing about like, it's me, but I'm older and I have my own Ghostbusters team. And at the end of the day, I report back to the main office about all the ghosts I captured. So I always kind of yeah. fantasized about like, what's Ghostbusters going to be like when, like as a kid, like when I'm old enough to be a Ghostbuster, when it's been up and running for a little while. And now I'm just like another new guy. John, so how bummed were that. how bummed were you when a, somebody how bummed were you when someone explained to you that it was a movie? <laughs> so I was devastated. I, like it took a while to recover from that news. Yeah, yeah. And uh, honestly, I missed a lot of my sophomore year of high school because of it. So um, <laughs> oh. for real, like it was just it's that feeling of like there's no like there's no ramp up of like we got to invent the gear we've got to get the business running we've got to come out of retirement it's just like boom we're, right. we're coming in and ghostbusters is already ghostbusters and yeah. so to see them up and running to see the you know the organization expanding and there and there's a lot more people in it was just really really cool and really exciting and it immediately gives you that feeling of like there are now so many stories that can be told in this universe because now it's like you can kind of spread out from that point of like it exists. Right. Um, and then the other thing was just kind of like a cheeky feeling of like, just hype of like, yeah, that's right. Like all the, all the stuff that kind of popped up in the vein of Ghostbusters after Ghostbusters two, kind of playing on the same things, whether it was like Hellboy or Constantine or, or the TV show Supernatural or like in more recent times, like the SCP foundation and all that kind of stuff. It was just me getting like super hyped and like fist pumping, like Hellboy. Thank you for your service. Constantine, thank you for your service. We got it from here. Like whatever the, you know, the tribe called quest album is like just immediately like, Oh, thanks. Thanks for your time. But we're back. You know, uh, John, by the way, I like on veterans day, you decided to thank Hellboy for his service. That was really cool. Of you. <laughs> Listen, uh, that guy put in the work. Okay. <laughs> uh, also, John, you're a veteran. So uh, happy veterans day. Thank you. Appreciate yeah. it. Um, yeah. I, John, in all seriousness, I agree. I love the idea of, like obviously there's going to be new characters to introduce but not having to go through the whole where have the oh. ghostbusters been like it says yeah. right in the synopsis the ghostbusters have developed a secret lab yeah they're it's like we've been with, busting ghosts yeah they've teamed <laughs> up with a new team who, who you know and we're ready to go so i yeah. agree um matt let's uh, we haven't heard any of your thoughts yet what uh what was your level of excitement going into this not very high, if I'm going to be honest with you. Uh, oh, wow. I was wow. a little skeptical. I was a little worried because all of this, uh, the, the thought that it was going to be frozen, it was going to be cold. And I'm trying to think, how is that going to be scary? How is that going to be threatening? How is that going to be any of those things? Um, and then I watched the trailer and immediately I was 
I ate my words. Uh, okay. This has happened twice now because at first I told Tom <laughs> very early on, I did not want Ghost Egon. I thought that would be the dumbest mm. thing in the world. And there right. I am in afterlife crying <laughs> like a baby. Right. And here I am, uh, was very nervous. And then when the rumored name of Frozen Empire was out, I thought, oh, this is dumb. It's going to be stupid. How are they going to pull this off? And then immediately in the trailer, it was tense. It was suspenseful. It was uh, the word everybody's been using is chilling. Um, <laughs> And, and funny, like it, it, the, the things that you want in a Ghostbusters movie, we got a glimpse of in the trailer. So I, I was very excited. Oh, good. Yeah. I mean, it's so hard because like, I think we've all been conditioned with movies and marketing and the subtitles. And it's like, sometimes you kind of brace yourself. Like, is this going to be, you know, like one of those Jurassic World movies where it's just <laughs> like, you want it to be good and it's great that there's dinosaurs, but it's just, it's missing something, you know, but, um, what I loved about the trailer is it really modeled itself after the afterlife trailer. A lot of the same musical cues, mm -hmm. a lot of the same beats. Um, so yeah, well, I'm glad, uh, I'm glad you enjoyed it. Um, and, and well, I want to talk about the title, but let's get Tom's uh, early reactions as well. Sure. And Craig, you know, I definitely noticed that it shared some DNA with the afterlife trailer. Yeah. Uh, I didn't really know what to expect, but the thing that I took away most was that trailer opened up the world of ghostbusters, but not, not in the same way where it's like spreading out to the country because we're back to New York, but we never got anything on this scale before with the ice yeah. and the beach to a, to a point where in Ghostbusters 2, five years later, people were saying that didn't happen. And we had a hundred foot mm -hmm. marshmallow man walking down the street in New York. So I think that this opens <laughs> up the world and gives legitimacy and can carry the franchise, right? Yeah. Because there's not going to be deniers. How can somebody deny that, I don't know, a hundred people got killed by icicles? Right. Yeah. No, I, I agree. And I think... um. I do think it opens up the world significantly because, you know, listen, as, as we build up, you see a lot of the commentary and people, everyone's like, is it going to be Vigo? And it's like, I think it's pretty mm -hmm. clear. Like maybe in the movie, there's a, a wink, wink, nudge, nudge to, to Vigo or something like that. Or yeah. maybe the, you know, but I, I think afterlife really did what it needed to do to, to bring closure to one piece of the puzzle and open up the doors to another. And, I'm sure that the writers, I'm sure Gil and Jason were really excited about the opportunity to create an original story with an original villain. And it's not just bringing it back to New York. I think this is the thing that, that is really cool. They bring it back to New York, which is the familiar setting for Ghostbusters, but the landscape's going to be so different. Yeah. Yeah. Because, because of the, the, the threat of the ice. So um, let's talk about the title though. Cause we didn't really dig into the title too much on YHS the other night. So I'll, I'll, whoever wants to chime in first, it doesn't have to be in uh, order. So uh, any strong feelings one way or the other on, on frozen empire? Um, I will say that I was not really sure about the title when I heard it. And when people were dancing, like sort of tossing it around as a rumored title for a while. And I was like, oh, I don't really don't know about that. That sounds to me like the, an alternate title for the second star Wars movie, like, cause they're all on Hoth <laughs> and they are the empire. Um, and I was like, I don't know, but having seen the trailer, like it all fits together. And it makes a lot of sense. And it, I don't know, I think that it really kind of fits well. Like since seeing the trailer and thinking about that name, I've been having too many thoughts about like the underground steam pipes that sit underneath New York mm. city and what happens when they all freeze um, oh, yeah. and sort of how, you know, something rises <laughs> out of the ground from all of that. Um, so I think it, it's very apt for what we are getting, right? I don't think I would have understood it before as being particularly apt, but has now seen the trailer. I'm like, oh yeah, no, that totally makes sense. Something is coming and something is going to take over and it's frozen. So right. yeah, that makes sense. And I, I like the idea that, you know, it's a, it plays into the idea that New York is the empire state. But when you look at the synopsis and it's talking about, you know, an ancient artifact awakens an ancient evil. And then you, obviously it's ice, but like, you know, maybe this is something that tried to, take over or create some kind of empire in the past and now it's it's back and it's trying to do it again so i think it's one of those things that it like as we learn more about the movie we're gonna see like oh this title fits even more than we thought it did sure yeah i agree that yeah, kind of happened with uh afterlife too go for it Matt. yeah mm -hmm. i was just maybe it, it's because i'm polish historically we're slow <laughs> <laughs> but it wasn't until, Craig, I listened to your original review and I connected the Empire State. Uh, that, then it, the name kind of made sense. Otherwise, I didn't really care for it. Um, and I know uh, I've see, I'm have i seeing even in the comments some other suggested titles. Um, but I'm willing to wait and see because I am sure that there's a reason 
that it is what it is. I like the idea of Ghostbusters death chill, but uh, you know, I, right. I, I'm going to reserve that comment and that decision until after I watch the film. Sure. Sure. I get it. Yeah. I mean, I think that it, what makes it hard, by the way, I've got this image up just from the trailer, which is like, it's just one of those things that has already quickly become an iconic yeah. Thing, yeah. thing you know, like seeing the firehouse completely, frozen with these huge ice spikes coming out of the ground it's just it's just kind of wild and i think this is the i don't want to describe it as uncanny valley but you guys have all been longtime obsessive fans of ghostbusters it's so it's it's crazy to see something new that's real mm-hmm. that's not a fan film it's not a yeah you know it's not a woulda coulda shoulda 90s thing it's like this is a real thing from a real ghostbusters movie not a real Ghostbusters. well kind of a real good movie and uh (laughs) it's and it's coming and it's and it's here and you know sometimes i i will i don't forget that afterlife exists but it's it's like i don't want to ever get to that point where we start taking any of this for granted because we know none of this was a guarantee. Like there, right. there's a scenario where there's there where Ghostbusters is basically something people remember on Halloween every year, and, and that's yeah. about it. So, um, any other thoughts on title, uh, or we can uh, move on? I was just gonna. I'll just one up Matt real quick, this. and oh, you go ahead. I was just going to say, I, I didn't realize the Empire State Connection until John said it like two minutes ago. <laughs> so you might have. <laughs> Yeah, Help I am. Um, we're catching on. <laughs> I wonder if Jared Leto was so excited about the Empire building, the Empire State Building connection that he went and he climbed it. it. Like, How can I get like yeah. climb on the back of this uh, <laughs> Ghostbusters hype? <laughs> I'll go climb this building. So yeah, I think it was. I think it was just really cool to, like you said, Craig, just that immediate recognition of like, oh, that's that's the shot. Like when people, you know, in the future are putting together little like, you know here's an image from each Ghostbusters movie. I could easily see it being like the rooftop temple, the river of slime, you know, uh, Ecto in the field. And then like the frozen firehouse or something. I was, I was going to say like the Ecto in the barn to me is the iconic moment from the first trailer that we all remember. It's like, that was the thing, right? That was the, that moment, that frame out of the trailer just made you go, Oh my God, this is going to (laughs) happen. Right. And so I think that that, that frozen depiction of the firehouse with the beacon of light just kind of sitting in the middle of it that's kind of still glowing in the midst of all this other frozen stuff really yeah. it does kind of the same oh my thing. gosh really nice you saying it like that jim just not to okay, no pun intended but it gave me chills like it, <laughs> it, it was like that idea of like all of this chaos is happening but like you know we'll keep the light on like we're mm-hmm. still here right by the way, Jason Grohoski made an edit of the yeah. trailer <laughs> and with oh, the yeah. we'll keep the light and tweeted it to Motel 6. And Motel 6 was like, thanks. <laughs> thanks for including us. Motel oh. 6 is now an unofficial marketing partner of Ghostbusters Frozen Empire. Right, right, right. <laughs> um, so this is something that just gets me as such a huge fan of Ghostbusters 2. Starting off the trailer, like this is hyper intentional. This amazing yeah. shot of the Statue of Liberty where, again, I think fans get caught up in this world of like, like, OK, they could show us like a slime blower and the Statue of Liberty and Ecto-1A and pink slime and 10 other pieces of iconography from Ghostbusters 2. But it's like people want a piece of dialogue where Ray's like, this is just like the time we fought Vigo at the museum. Yeah. It's just like, <laughs> like, can we just settle it once and for all? Ghostbusters 2 is canon. It happened. Yeah. It's okay. Like, does this confirm it to anybody else? Is this their way of telling us? I don't know. That's what I took. No, away. this well, the fact that the statue's there and appears to have never been moved is what suggests that it's not canon. <laughs> no, I was obviously- going to say I need I need somebody to like. I want the opening shot to be this, and then like a tour boat going by, and you hear someone be like, "I thought she was facing the other way." Yeah, <laughs> like, it faces the other direction now. Yeah, that's funny. It's not welcoming people to the United States. It's, it's, it's waving like telling everyone, "Don't you know? go, bye." <laughs> we have to get out of here. Um, <laughs> so uh, you know, we we've a lot of people have been kind of acknowledging like the opening of the trailer, New York, summer heat, Coney Island. Then the freeze starts happening. So anybody want to chime in with with any thoughts on on any of it? Go for it because I'm 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 here to listen. I'm just surprised. I mean, once everyone found out it was filming in uh, across the pond, we all thought it was going to be Ghostbusters International. And I mean, look look at this. We're in well, New York. What the heck? How did that happen? 
Well, it is interesting that I think I think people because people knew it filmed in London, it's almost like people are surprised that it's all New York. It's like yeah. we forget, you know, mm-hmm. movies are made, you know, all the Avengers movies take place in New York. They're filmed up the street from me here in Atlanta. So it's like well, that was, <laughs> that was the, okay. like when they said we filmed it in London, the first thing that popped into my head was because I'm just an all around giant nerd. Like I knew that they had filmed uh, a large part of Batman Begins on a soundstage in London and literally recreated like Gotham city streets in there. And so my immediate thought was like, I wonder if, if that's what they're doing. And then I also thought of the real ghostbusters episode where they go to the set because they're making the movie and they've recreated the firehouse. And I was like, what if that's literally exactly what they did? Right. I, I think what's interesting is, you know, usually you have a second unit that goes and shoots in another location and it just shoots like smaller segments or pickup shots. But for this movie, I think that you're going to find that the second unit had a lot of heavy lifting to do, like, you know, major (laughs) action sequences that are in this trailer happened in New York while filming of entirely different things involving your principal cast happened in other places. Sure. And I, t- I think to me, it's a very interesting thing to like, want to think about and see how it comes out as a movie, because you essentially have two units in different countries filming content <clears throat> around the same time, fighting against the clock of a strike um, and trying to get it done. And then they have to composite this stuff together. And I think the trailer reveals just how well, that is going to work. Like I'm, yeah. I'm convinced there's no doubt in my mind. If you were asked like the, in my inner child, is that firehouse that they're standing in, in the trailer in a different country? I'm like, no, they're in New York. What are you talking about? It's yeah. Totally fine. Right. It's right. Fine. Right. Yeah. Um, so, uh, what else? So a lot of the opening shots are very reminiscent of some of my favorite films, uh, you know, deep impact Armageddon die hard yeah. with a vengeance, like any movie where yeah. it's like the sweltering hot of a New York summer before the disaster hits, like, that is a staple <laughs> of my movie going experience. Yeah, yeah. Die Hard with a Vengeance is a nice pull. Like I've been trying to think about what it is, the aesthetic of this that makes me feel very New York. And that's a very good pull, Craig. I like that comparison. Thank you very much. Uh, I believe the, the opening song in that film was Hot Time Summer, Time, in, the summer city. in the City. Yeah. Yep. Um, but anyways, I digress. Our best wishes to Bruce Willis. Uh, it's tough stuff. But anyways. Um, OK, so let's kind of skim through here a little bit. Um, the song is playing, the freeze starts happening. So as you guys are watching this for the first time, were your 30, 40 seconds into the trailer. Is it, are you getting worried at this point that this is just going to be like a teaser teaser with a title reveal and that's it. Cause I was, I was getting a little stressed. I had, I I had thoughts. I remember I was talking to, uh, to our friend Austin, uh, the night before it came out and I said, what if it is? And I was like, okay, like I don't care if like we get one shot of just showing the city freeze over as long as it ends on the fire. Like it could have stopped at the, you know, the shot of the firehouse freezing over and right. then just giving me a proton pack sound and the title. And I would have been happy. I would have wanted right. to yeah. see more, but I would have been okay. Right. Um, I didn't expect more than the first one we got for afterlife. Right. Which yeah. was just sort of like, let's go to the barn and see some slime hanging off a tree. And right. like, that's about it. That's all you're going to get. So to get this much was very surprising and yeah. fun. We've got a comment from Stuart McLean says, finally, you guys are live when I'm in the UK, Scotland watching great work, everyone. <laughs> thank you so much for the content. Finally, GB4. Uh, thank you, Stuart. It's fun. Finally, we're getting Ghostbusters 4. <laughs> like, <laughs> <laughs> I agree though. And I'm getting and when GB five comes out, I'm going to be thinking the same thing. Yeah. Um, so Matt, Tom, anything on this? This is, we, we kind of touched on the, the stakes here. Uh, we have giant ice spikes flailing out of the ocean. I really hope a couple people get impaled. <laughs> they, I have really to. they have to, That'd I mean, there's great. so many spikes. <laughs> Could you um, imagine like an Aryan tweeting? Yeah, uh, like oh, impaled gosh. body on the beach. Yeah, yeah. That was an impaled body. That would be <laughs> like amazing. That, that's what he mainly worked on was just yeah. <laughs> one giant impaled body on the beach. That um, and impaled sea life. There's a lot of like impaled octopus. Yeah. There's oh, a lot God. of impaled like <laughs> sharks. <laughs> <laughs> I hope there's like this is dangerous. Yeah, yeah. This is very scary. But yeah. I don't think I don't think we've known going into a film just how um, how powerful and how much of a threat the ultimate baddie is going to be. So we're going into mm. this and right away, we know that what they're about to mess with is something 
to be terrified of. And, and it's yeah, like fun, it's fundamentally different than the, like the previous movies that have always been like a big bad situation that is contained, right? right? Like yeah. you have Spook Central is where the fi- where the finale happens, or the museum is where the finale happens, or the farmhouse is where the finale happens, and so the big threat ends up being in this one location. Whereas yeah. this is like literally this city, the city appears to be under attack from the sea, right? Like, it's like this is big. Right. The fact that we know that there's probably going to be at least some sort of it, it looks like a chase sequence happening in the city. Like I'd, I'd be really interested to see how expansive the final battle of the film gets, especially with there being so many new characters. And if it's kind of like there's a handful of like the main characters attacking the main baddie, but then the other ones are like literally just in the street spread out fighting like one off ghosts and stuff. Um, right. Kyle, uh, he says, am I wrong? Has no one died in any Ghostbusters movie? Only one, unfortunately. Egon. And that was, yeah. it was Egon. It was Egon. But no, no, like, uh, citizen. We, we, that, well, actually, we don't know. There could have been a couple. We don't know that, right? Yeah. <laughs> I, I, I think. Stepped on by Stay Puft. I, yeah, I think there was at least some guy who died of a heart attack during Stay Puft. Yeah. Like, it was like, there was probably a class action lawsuit of people who had, it's like, were you or any of your family affected by the Stay Puft Marshmallow Man walking down Central Park West? <laughs> Um, that would be fun. I mean, he stepped on a church <laughs> and a car. Yeah, yeah. There's a class action lawsuit that you can join yeah. now. <laughs> yeah. Do you your family start suffer from marshmallows philioma? <laughs> Tr- tried it, didn't work. Let's move on. Um, oh yeah, and J.K. Simmons was ripped in half. They oh, that's go. true. But he was already dead. He was already dead. Technically, yeah. he was he was reanimated. He's... So he had technically died already and was just finished off. He was but... he was on that Cthulhu business where uh, death doesn't die. Right. Hey, Craig, can you go back for a second to the yeah. picture of the guy in the taxi cab? Sure. So this is something I want to just put out there in the podcast world because it was funny when it got said. And I thought the same thing. J.D. Raymer made this comment inside the containment units Facebook group. And I had thought the same thing when I saw this still that there's a whole bunch of us who want this guy's autograph. We, yeah. need, we need this is an eight by 10. This he, exact frame of this guy looking up. We don't know who he is yet. We don't know if he has he, any lines, but a bunch of us need his autograph because he reminds me. 10. He <laughs> reminds me of the guy from uh, the Dark Knight Rises the first time when he uses the, the bat wing thing. And there's like a cop there who's just looking up and his hat gets blown off. This he's that guy for Ghostbusters now. <laughs> this is great though. I mean, I think it's cool. And also, like what you know, obviously Afterlife took place in 2021, but it has the feeling of like an 80s, you know, rural Amblin movie. Like this is you know, we're in modern times now. Modern yeah, cabs, agreed. modern clothing. Um uh, Joe Cool says, "Did anyone else notice how the ice forms a path to the firehouse? Very interesting. Yeah, um, I would not be surprised if that has something to do um, with you know the containment unit or, or something like that. But we'll we'll get there. Um, let's uh, so let's kind of play this through a little bit. So, whoa, there we go. Uh, the threat, the spikes, and then yeah, let's take a look here. Yeah, there's a clear path to the firehouse." Oh, literally, because look at how the spikes come up on both sides. Mm-hmm. Yeah, like there's yeah. none that are just right in front of the camera. It's like video game style, like playing Spider-Man. Yeah. PS, like, it's like, yeah. I think that's where we got to go. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Somebody's voice. It looks like we're going to have to go down that path. Oh, um, <laughs> it's, it's Bruce Campbell. Like, what are you waiting for, kid? They yeah. marked the path for you. <laughs> um, so we talked about the iconic shot here, so maybe not as much to say, but let's let's start getting into the shot of the Ecto. Okay, listen. I know we got Afterlife, Beautiful. and we've seen we've we've seen the Ecto do crazy stuff before, but that is all that is awesome. It's I beautiful. love that it's I love that it's just the status quo. Like the Ecto can move. That's it. No questions asked. This is the expectation now in every Ghostbusters movie. If if the Ecto one shows up, it's gonna be peeling. Right. Um. That to me is very real Ghostbusters. Right, yeah, the right. Ecto one in real Ghostbusters could do all kinds of things. Yeah, sure. like no other car could do. It's so that, to watch this car spin like this is just like, yeah, I, I love it. It's great. It's that little bit of like heightened suspension of disbelief where it's like you know in real life. I mean, obviously this is real life. Yes, but like in like that car has no business moving that way. But it's like it's right. Ghostbusters. It's like a mystery paranormal adventure. Like we got to go. This car needs to move. Mm-hmm. Um, and I'm thinking about the ladder here. So the ladders, it's still afterlife style, right? Yeah, yeah, right, yeah. right. Yeah. Okay, so we can assume the gunner scene, all that. 
Okay. She never looked better. Never mm-hmm. looked better. I have she a question looks- though. Maybe we can we can all ponder. Sure. You know yeah. these these silver tubes on the side. Yes. They're they're now silver. They were blue previously. That's yes. true. I remember seeing pictures post Afterlife of the uh, the original Ecto one at the Sony okay. lot, and those blue things had like spread. They'd like burst or something. It was when um, Jason was doing the screening during the pandemic. Those blue tubes got really fat. And like okay. maybe the sun damage or something. So do you think they changed this for the aesthetic reason or for like a practicality reason? I don't know. I mean, they made very subtle changes to, to the design of the Ecto. We know there's the red racing mm-hmm. stripes on the top, maybe some new stuff on the roof rack that we don't hundred percent know all about yet. And then the, the color of the tubes. Um, listen, I love the blue tubes. I don't, I don't get too hung up on, on the design aesthetics and, and yeah. that kind of yeah. stuff. I mean, I think, I think it makes, I think, I think it makes sense to kind of like, you might get these changes uh, for the simple fact that whatever, it's kind of like us when we try to figure out how to like, Hey, how do we get a screen accurate prop? And we go, can we get something from 40 years ago? No, right. No. Okay, great. Well, what's the closest thing you could get? We'll go buy a, this suit or a, that suit. Cause you can't right. get what they made. And so maybe it's that simple of like in universe, you know, yeah. you can't get the same manufactured thing you got before. So here's the analog that fits with it instead, you know, well, and it could also, it could also just be the fact that like, you know, what are the subtle ways that we can mark the passage of time and the, you know, incremental upgrading of gear, right. Which might've brought the Ecto one home. Right. And, you know, if they really wanted to, like, that's kind of an insignificant piece of the makeup of the car. If they wanted to find or make new blue tubes for the sake of the movie, they could have, but maybe that's just their way of being like, Hey, in the background, you're seeing little things change. Doesn't need explanation. Doesn't need, you know, a big lore based reason other than like we're home. We've upgraded. Winston's probably injected some money into the operation. So things are going to change a little bit. Right. And I know there's a lot of discussion too about the upgrades to the packs. We'll, we'll talk about that a little oh, bit. God, and like, I love that so much. The, the one, the <laughs> one thing Jacob Walsh always says is like, no matter what, whatever we see on screen is now Canon. It doesn't retroactively take away anything that came before it, but it is like yeah. kind of, it's just the progress of, yeah. of, you know, <laughs> of I like time. AJ's got a funny comment. <laughs> says, the change was probably made to save on the number of paint applications on toys. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I've heard less crazy right things. <laughs> yeah. Uh, well, let's let's kind of keep scooting around here. So we got the Ecto flying this spring, and then we got our first shot of Phoebe here in the firehouse. Does this pole still work? Um, <laughs> All frosted up. It's it's really cool to see Phoebe. In, in like full Ghostbusters gear with elbow pads and a yeah. pack and like yeah it's just her it's own crazy. suit instead of wearing her grandpa's old yep. suit right right I know when my grandpa used to give me clothes there's like mustard stains and stuff on it I was like, you gotta get, you gotta get, <laughs> get your own thing my question about this poll is um we talked about this during the extraplasm um afterlife commentary about whether or not Egon had stolen the polls from the firehouse and taken them like strapped <laughs> it to the top of the Ecto one and drove all the way to Oklahoma because so that he had he the same fire pole in his basement. Right. Ray so was... did they bring the pole back. Is this the one that they take it out of Oklahoma and truck it all the way backward and Winston spring for new ones. There was, there was definitely a, um, the reason, the real reason why Ray was so mad at Egon was that Egon took the poles and Ray was stuck on the second floor of the firehouse. For six months. Um, so, okay. Uh, any other comments? Anybody moving along? No, I just love that. Like it, it kind of immediately, like the people who are just like, Oh, well, like it, it makes sense that they, the kids were like doing stuff in afterlife. But now that we're back home, like they're not like, leave it to the adults. Now it's going to be about the ghostbusters. And it's like, bro, yeah. they are ghostbusters. Like, the ghostbusters. why are you like, it is. Well, what I mean, it if is. you we watch were... the, if you see the end of the trailer, it kind of seems like the core team is yeah. the the Spangler you know, family, the Spangler family, which is which is really cool. Yeah, I think, um, um, some folks have said about this image that the straps she has. I've heard people suggest that she's wearing a spirit pack straps, and I've heard people God. suggest she has Hazlab pack straps on, and I've also heard um, that potentially she wore a Hazlab pack on set because she had just had her back surgery. <laughs> Yeah. Um, so I'm, I'm sort of intrigued to know whether or not she's actually wearing a hazlab well, pack at this moment in the movie. Uh, no, which would be funny. <laughs> I mean, listen, what 
we've all seen what a stunt pack looks like in a Ghostbusters yeah. movie. Not nearly as detailed <laughs> as a real pack. So oh, agreed. Yeah. it's probably if they need them to wear a stunt pack and they have, you know, 10 Hazlab packs sitting around, yeah. like, might as well go for it. Oh, like, I would totally agree. Yeah. And I, don't think it's a, I don't think it's I also love pack. the, I, I also love the idea that, you know, I, I'd be surprised if it really is just a Haslab pack, but I also wouldn't be surprised if they were like, you know what? Like we have this company, they're making these really detailed things that the fans can buy. We want everybody to feel like, wow, I've really got the stuff. And Winston is here. Like I said, he's injecting money. Little things are changing anyway. Why wouldn't they look at all the gear and say like, let's, let's put new straps on it. Let's make these harnesses more comfortable. Let's right. make this more efficient. Yeah. Let's make this new because why are we using stuff from the eighties right. to yeah. make gonna update these work in, in 2023? Well, so, and it's not as if we didn't see them use 198 spirit Halloween traps for a field in the yeah. last movie, right? Like that effect is so pulled off using history. Halloween props. So, yeah. yeah. So here we got Patton Oswalt doing the voiceover. I was surprised that Patton Oswalt was the, the, you know, the person doing the, the first piece of dialogue here. But if if his character, like the character he plays in the movie, it definitely looks like some sort of historian who will be there. There's always going to be somebody to do a little bit of exposition. And and we know <laughs> clearly Dan Aykroyd is going to do some of it or a lot of it. And yeah. that's OK. <laughs> uh, but here we got Finn Wolfhard, Celeste O'Connor in our first look at James A. Caster. Mm -hmm. Um. This is where I started to notice stuff that was like, oh, which is because if you look closely at him, it's not immediately obvious what he's wearing. But if you look close, you can see there's a no ghost logo on his arm. So I'm okay. like, what What are you wearing, sir? What is that? Tell it's me like about a, your ensemble. Walk the catwalk look, for me. Like it's a not black, a red jacket. Red <laughs> like a black suit. Um, and yeah, there's been a lot of speculation over over his character. We just don't know anything yet. So the, everyone's taking guesses. Matt, Tom, any any thoughts on new character here? It's not Oscar Barrett. I'm pretty sure. <laughs> I don't think so either. <laughs> I, I've seen I've seen that suggested a lot because he fits mm. that age. But I've so, now heard suggested that if you try to decode the portion of his name tag that's visible, I've seen people try to argue that his name tag says Milnitz. Here's the okay, Jim. Jim, before you get before you rule that out would later uh, there's a shot where he's he's wearing one of the red coats and he's got the flashlight up and you can clearly see at least a couple of letters on his name tag and there is an n and an i in there right and so it's yep. like wait a second <laughs> yeah i'd be it, totally okay with him not being related to anybody in that yeah film. yeah me too <laughs> like that if if for some reason rick moranis really is like now nah, I'm, I'm good on ghostbusters this might still be a way of being like hey lewis tully is and was a part of this universe even if he's not on camera so maybe his son is now like hey i want to do this i don't think lewis tully can have a son <laughs> <laughs> there's no way he didn't you think lewis tully handling a proton pack that he was able to procreate after that he, he <laughs> fucked up somewhere he messed up he's he, <laughs> hey man listen times change and like he the the opening line of like you want to come over and play boggle or super mario brothers like it works every time, dude. So. I was always mad the way he said Mario. I was like, it's no. not, it's not Mario. <laughs> um, okay, uh, Finn, awesome. Um, Celeste, great. I I'm glad that they're both back in the movie. Uh, you know, peop I thought I really thought Lucky was a cool character in Afterlife. <clears throat> I like you know, her in podcasts. Are the only characters really from Somerville, yeah, and yeah. clearly, okay. you know. Go for any, it. Any thoughts or speculation as to why they're in New York City? Um, I well, I think Lucky makes more sense than podcasts. Just thinking outside the box, because like she says in the movie, she's like, "I I, I hate living here. I want to yeah. get out of this mm -hmm. town." And like, yeah. clearly she she has this connection with them. So if they're in New York, yeah. maybe she would try to go there. I um, think my my guess or my when you know, early after afterlife ended when we were all speculating, like, what do you think the next one's going to be? Uh, my guess was that the family finished the school year in Somerville, Trevor graduated, and then Phoebe also graduated, which really embarrassed Trevor. And then this is during the summer. So podcast is coming to visit for the summer. And like you said, lucky was like, I'm getting out of here. She's older than Trevor. She's already there working with Winston. 
So that's why everybody's there. And Dude, then like, enough time will have passed <laughs> by the time Ghostbusters Afterlife 3 comes out that they'll just all be living. Do there. we think there's a, a whole other side quest movie in Lucky and Podcast going on a cross country road trip? Because that, that might be a fun <laughs> side story. Like the Matrix video game before the second Matrix came out. <laughs> uh, Oh, and he just okay. wants to stop at all the like weird like you'll yeah. never believe what's at this sideshow road stop. Right, and right. she's just like it's not real. And he's like, I've got to get it for the podcast. I still have some questions about how long they were in Somerville after this. I mean, th- there were some criminal charges to deal with. No, <laughs> I mean, yeah, you're probably right. No, her dad. Was like, I'm kidding, but so- her dad was like, uh, "Lucky, quit blowing up that farm." I- <laughs> um, Jason Jason Grohoski said, "Lucky and Podcast will be an animated series," and I'm just going to say right now, if you I'd took, watch that. if you took Lucky and Podcast and did like a road trip version of Gravity Falls, 100 percent sold on it. Okay, well, let's hope that that happens because it sounds really fun. Yeah, um, so, and obviously, we don't know where they're standing here, but it looks like it's probably in a building. <laughs> Probably the fire fire house. (laughs) Not inside of a tent. Inside of an actual structure. Yeah. (laughs) Um, So we got a lot of quick cuts here. We've got this, this, you know, Patton's doing the... the, Okay. Let's listen real quick. Let's listen to it real quick so we, we know the exact dialogue. Hold on. Here we go. For the first time in New York history, people froze to death in the middle of July. Okay. For the first time... In New York history, people froze to death in the middle of July, but we have this shot that is clearly not of this people of, froze to not of this time. Gosh, no, this is like the 19th century. Yeah, 100. Right. Okay. Like the guy, like Jake brought this up when you guys did your trailer reaction. Like the frozen guy clearly looks like he is in period dress. His his uh his facial hair looks like it's of a certain time and then the guy on the left who's walking up like what happened here he's got like this hat on and what looks like some sort of cloak or cape and it it made me think of like a union soldier or something do we think it's another yellowstone spinoff like 1893 <laughs> cold <Ford>. stone <laughs> yeah yeah cold I stone. honestly well mr I honestly michael wondered T, if the guy sorry go ahead I was just going to say, he asks, is this a firehouse flashback? Like, I never even considered that this could be. Oh, that's what I thought. Same firehouse. And maybe that's, that's what, what I'm thinking. Like, whatever happened in the past happened at the firehouse. And mm-hmm. then that's kind of why the path is, like, leading to the firehouse. Right, right. And the guy on the left is wearing a hat that looks kind of like, you know, a firehouse. I mean, maybe hat. the building itself has a history. Apparently. Sorry. It's <laughs> um, so... I hey, love you for saying that. Everything right? happens for a reason, right? Um, that's that's the end of renting that place because there's reasons, right? And so. I think people, yeah, yeah we kind of like if you when you close up on his garb, he, it's he's oh wearing, my god, like, Jake, stop it! There's uh, there's an episode of the real Ghostbusters where they end up going back in time and getting to the firehouse in the 50s, like not the 1950s. So it might not be the first, you know, like it might not be the same time period, but that idea of like going back in time. And then they're fighting a ghost in the past as like old firefighters. I don't think that's what's going to happen here. But the idea of tying a big bad in the present to like previous firefighters who might have encountered it in the past. Like, ugh, you're tickling all my fancies right now. <laughs> yeah, it's really cool. We And then we've got this kind of this. There's been speculation of where this location is. I mean, it could be anywhere it looks like a house or an apartment or something but we have a door freezing and blowing off the hinges with a there. lot of deadbolts with a lot and of deadbolts in that door some pumas and nikes all in the <laughs> corner there oh yeah I, have, mm, theory. Shoe I think this is heads apartment i think this is kumail's apartment like i feel like him being a sneakerhead fits with the style you see him exhibiting oh, throughout the trailer yeah, good plus he opens that like hidden passage later on like is is he some kind of like I'm a sneakerhead, but also I'm like a conspiracy theorist or like a nerd about stuff? Welcome to my a collector. Hideout. Yeah, like we know that there's probably some sort of. I think that's was suggested at points that there is an <laughs> artifact in this movie of some sort. That Dan Aykroyd right. said that. Mm. So maybe he's a collector, um, and he's like, maybe. you know, that's why he's got this door padlocked with five padlocks on it. Maybe that's so. how he affords his New York apartment. Is he buys shoes, he sells shoes, he buys <laughs> things, he sells things. He's he's Craig. He does eBay hangs probably. He's me. Am I in the movie? This is great. Um, we all saw Kumail the other day tweeted that the movie was kind of inspired to be just like an episode of the real Ghostbusters, and I, I yeah. thought, 
I mean, people used to say that about answer the call, but I right. thought I used to think it was a little like, sure, maybe a little bit, but I don't think, what are you doing, John? Oh, you got a real Ghostbusters shirt on. Representing. I, I don't think Paul Feig and Katie Dippold were, were no. watching old episodes of the real Ghostbusters. I think um, that was just a coincidence of like making that finale a little more action packed. Right. But am I, I wrong I, in thinking that it was actually Melissa McCarthy who made that statement? Like I think she interview? said she was a fan of the real Ghostbusters, but I don't okay. think it necessarily played into the movie. I think she said like maybe that was what drew her to the, the project. Gotcha. Right. Well, anyway, so this uh, thing happens here, and then we get our first shot of friend of the podcast. No, friends of the podcast. McKenna <laughs> Grace and Mr. Logan Kim. It surprised ben. me how many people were like, was podcast in this? I'm like, what? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Did they do the same? They're still thing grown up, the, though. They look the second, so much older. The third Harry Potter movie. They're like, "Where's Daniel Radcliffe?" It's like he's right there. He's like <laughs> ten feet tall now. Um, hey, Tom, Matt, this might be a good seg segue to do a little plug ski for things you guys have going on. Would that be okay? Plug any yeah. plug? Sure. We'll plug plug. Let's talk about the containment we'll unit for a second. Well, tonight's episode is also sure. brought to you by. Uh, gbfans.com. We'll talk about that. We'll talk about the containment unit. Head over to gbfans.com for all of your unbelievable ghostbusters needs toys collectibles and obviously proton pack parts uh we're gonna put the website right in the chat here uh i have a feeling there's gonna be a lot of new proton packs being built uh in the next little while and uh you know you're we gonna want to have fans jingle that's what we need oh we should do the gb fans why just jingle contest yeah Ooh, okay like uh, oh no we should get dave coulier and john stamos to write the jingle <laughs> They did Kitty Krispies. Um, head over to gbfans.com oh, for our good friend AJ Cut Quick. It uh, and uh, well, do it for him. Yes, it's his business. And go buy some stuff. Um, all right, let's talk about the containment unit real quick. So let me uh, do this real quick. Tom, you want to you wanna start us off here? Sure. What do you guys uh, got going on? Are you pulling something up or are you just, you're good? Uh, well, good, we have know. a signing coming up. Um, it's not for sale yet. It will be soon. We're waiting on a couple details, but. Uh, in about a month, we'll be seeing Ms. McKenna Grace uh, out in Pittsburgh. So uh, we've been doing afterlife signings since the movies came out. Uh, we had Finn and Logan last year. So there's a couple uh, of that team we're still working on, um, hoping to get those uh, wrapped up sooner rather than later. Okay. So if people want to get in on – now, you, it's not up for sale yet, but there's going to be an autograph yeah. opportunity with McKenna Grace, um, which is amazing right. because I don't know if you guys know – McKenna Grace is now officially like an A-list actor and musician. Yep. Over 2 million followers on Instagram. Very impressive. Uh, she's a superstar. And if you want to get her autograph on one of your Ghostbusters toys or 8x10s or something like that, how, where where do people find this information once it's uh, available? Uh, so it'd be in the group on Facebook. Uh, the containment unit, we collect spores, molds, and Ghostbusters autographs. Uh, that's our group. You can join that. We have a page as well. Uh, the page is actually called TCU Collectibles. You can check it out there. Um, either of those, Matt runs the Instagram. So why don't you share those, Matty? Yeah, it's uh, the GB Containment Unit on Instagram. Uh, you can follow, it's more of my personal account, but I share all that same information at Ghostbusters Autographs at, uh, on Instagram as well. Sweet. Yeah, that's amazing. Uh, you guys do really amazing work provide a lot a, a real service for the community also um anybody out there who's got a ghostbusters item that's autographed and you want to know if it's not real go ahead and post it in the containment <laughs> unit group you're gonna find out real quick very quickly you're gonna find out very quickly and then your your gut reaction is gonna be well how do you know it's like yo dude you're the one who asked <laughs> yeah you're the one who asked and and they're right i assure you <laughs> it's like hey everybody knows that harold ramus autographs are plentiful on etsy oh <laughs> you know come on <laughs> Uh, no, super excited about that uh, opportunity. Uh, McKenna is, is great, and uh, you know she's the she's the leader of the Ghostbusters these days. So how how cool is that? Um, so we got uh, McKenna Grace and Logan Kim back together uh, here, and you got to imagine they're going to be teaming up and going on some mm -hmm. adventures in this movie, right? Yeah, I love that this looks like. Sure. I love that this looks like they're on a little side quest with Ray to like dig into what's going on. Right, it kind of seems that way. Starts. Yeah. Um, well, let's let's we get this uh, voice over here. Let's just listen to it, because, you know, one of the things the first time around was 
you know, the original Ghostbusters, how much involvement will they have? And we know like Ray's got a scene in the middle of the movie. It's about two, three minutes. And then they show up at the end. This trailer kind of has it seeming that maybe the, the original guys are going to be a little bit more involved in, in the thick of the story, which is, mm -hmm. which is really cool. So let's, uh, let's take a listen to Mr. Ray stance right here. What is it? The death chill. The power to kill by fear itself. All right. The death chill. The death chill. There he is. <laughs> Good old Uncle Dan Aykroyd back. He doesn't act a lot anymore, but he's here. I mean, I don't know. Let's round table this. Jim, you start us off. What, what are you feeling here? I think that he seems more grim in delivering this news than he ever has in anything else he's talked mm -hmm. about as a character. Like that that's when you first see him, it totally makes sense that he's providing this explanation. But when he's talked about, you know, psychomagnetic slime, there's like this level of excitement. And this yeah. is almost like, oh God, this is like the worst thing we could potentially face. Uh -huh. and so it's kind of <laughs> grim. It's really what sent it home for me. It's like the death chill. And yeah. your, uh, your tear ducts freeze over. It's like, <laughs> oh my God. He really Dude, like it's, this, man. <laughs> it, it feels like he's having that realization of like, it's one thing to be like, oh, Gozer. And it's like this one entity. And if we can stop this one entity, awesome. Oh, Vigo. It's, it's one guy. If we can stop him, that's great. He's got big right. schemes and a river of slime, but like we can trace it back to one thing. But when he says the death chill and he starts like he's not even talking about like the name of the entity. I don't right. think it, it, he's talking about the effect and yep. this thing that it's just like when just in regular life, when you when you feel that hint of like my life is at stake and you feel the death chill and now you're seeing it on this massive exponentially worse scale. And then the the gravity of like what is here that is able to manipulate the raw feeling of I'm terrified I'm about to die and how exponentially greater and or like worse that could be than like just Gozer or just Vigo. Right. I right. sort of hope there's a set of outtakes on set that is just him saying like the death chill. It's great <laughs> with a bottle of crystal head vodka. Right. The head loves you back. Right, <laughs> right, right. Or just like <laughs> random clips from like people's videos or like other movies where someone goes like, what's happening? And then just the death chill, <laughs> the death chill. Oh, right. Right. Um, so, uh, Matt, any, any thoughts? I, I mean, you know, for us old dudes, which yeah, is all I of mean, us, this is, this, you know, this is what it's all about. Yeah. And this is where it got like, to your point, Craig, it was when Dan speaks or Ray speaks, you start to listen. And this is where things got really real for me. Like, yeah, we see the spikes and all this stuff, but when he talks about the death chill and then coming up in just a bit, we see eyes starting to freeze. It's like, holy crap. Right. This is a big deal. Yeah. Right. And then, so yeah, we get a little exposition here and then Tom, I'll, I'll go to you on this. We get the, the shots of inside the firehouse I mean, clearly something's going down like inside the firehouse. We got Winston mm -hmm. here with the pack on. You see the Ecto in the background. Again, <laughs> what what timeline are we on? Think I think it's Loki made this timeline for yeah. us. There, somebody should do a little <laughs> edit of that. Where he, spoilers if you haven't seen Loki, but when yeah, he's, don't, uh, don't when, stop, stop, don't. No one's watching. No one's but watching I feel like yet. Craig knows what I'm saying. There's an edit yeah. of that that I feel like could be very relevant and funny. <laughs> Absolutely. Um, Tom, you, you've, you've, you've worked with, uh, Mr. Uh, Zed Moore yeah. here quite a bit. It's great to see Ernie back and, and he doesn't age. Back. It's amazing. You'd love to see it. He looks great. <laughs> yeah. Seeing him around he the firehouse again is amazing. You know, I, I do have a question about his role though. And I, okay. I asked Matt this earlier. So right, Bill Mar uh, sorry, Peter Venkman, he's a professor. Winston's a business owner. Yeah. Ackroyd's bookstore owner. So are they like Ghostbuster Emeritus or are they, <laughs> I, you know, that's my big question going into it because I didn't expect to see them flight, flight suited up ever again. Yeah. So to see this, I got chills, especially right. my, it yeah, immediately right. made me think like, how bad is this going to get? Cause not only are they suited up, they're not out on a call. They're defending the firehouse. Like mm -hmm. you have to imagine like, all three of them probably did think like, this is cool. We've got so many new recruits. We've got Egon's whole family here. Like Ghostbusters is going to be alive and well. Like we've got people to handle this and we'll show them the way gladly. And maybe they show up to work wearing their flight suits or maybe they're just in like, you know, a business suit or their regular clothes. But then this goes down and it's like, oh no, it's like all hands on deck. Right. 
And I think at the end of Afterlife, you know, even if we never got another Ghostbusters movie, ending Afterlife with a post credit scene of Winston taking the Ecto back to the firehouse, it, it's like, okay, even if it's our imagination, we know that there's ghost busting adventures to come, but it's like two years later. It's like, Nope, here's Winston with a pack on. Also <laughs> the power cell on the pack has caution stripes. Now just yeah. pointing that out. Um, Cosmo uh, said something here. He, uh, they said, uh, I coin it. Here's where Venkman bites the dust. I am like, there's no evidence, but there's something about the way this feels that made me think if anybody gets hurt in this movie, I have a feeling it's Peter. Hmm. I don't know. I mean, it's just it's just a gut feeling. Like it's not yeah. based on anything, but right. I wouldn't right. hate seeing a ghost Peter Venkman tooling around like a force ghost, essentially, <laughs> like they had talked about in the nineties. Right, think that'd be right. Fun. It would be fun. Um, uh, real quick, we won't spend too much time in the equipment because we're gonna be picking the stuff apart for years to come. But That's John, its own I, episode. <laughs> I know, John. I know you are um somebody who is always dreamed up and concocted new you know additions color schemes uh to the packs what, what did you think of some of this new stuff absolutely loved it i think it's i again conversations i've had i know with you with other people with austin just the idea of like what does it look like to take a piece of gear that existed in that was invented in the 80s bring it into 2023 and make it still look like what you expect it to look like and to me, this is perfect. To me, this is, you know, it's it's the subtle things, the subtle upgrades, the things that make it look like, hey, we took another look at what we had. We changed a few things. We probably put in some, you know, little updated pieces of tech, changed some, some connections, made some of the power coupling more efficient or whatever. It's very clearly still a proton pack. I love that they've broken up like the all black look to it, but still kind of kept that like, you know, I mean, it, as much as people complain about like, uh, don't cover it in caution stripes, there is a very Ghostbusters thing about seeing yellow and black together. And it has that like, this is heavy machinery. Stay back. This is dangerous. We're using very, you know, hazardous things right now. And so making the bumper yellow, adding the caution stripes, you know, the yellow additions to the to the proton gun. I love it. And and side note, like, I don't know what the rules are. I know in the past they've said one of the reasons that they um, make a lot of the the toy proton packs blue is to avoid the idea of, like, that's a weapon. Right. But maybe by adding the yellow to break it up, that's enough of a color change that they can make screen accurate toy proton packs and get around that. So that's right. also a bonus. I had so, a, another thought about this. Um, sure. If that's cool. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I play a lot of Ghostbusters Spirits Unleashed, uh, and one of the things yes. that happens, you know, that game is supposed to sort of not necessarily be a hard canon, right? But it's sort of is supposed to exist alongside all these other things. And Ernie Hudson performs his role in that, you know, it's it's supposed to be sort of our same set of characters. We get our voice actors, mm -hmm. et cetera. And in that, like sort of when you interact with Winston, when he's standing around the firehouse, what he's often talking about is how he's had to deal with the, re the safety regulations being put on them by the city or the noise mm -hmm. complaints from the neighbors and these other things. And so part of me looking at this and sort of these like subtle tweaks to the proton pack that become like, oh, now you have more caution stuff on it or now you've got a big, <laughs> yellow bumper on it made me wonder whether or not they had to do it because of as troy just said liability yeah, um yeah. <laughs> so yeah and, like i sort of thought the same thing like that could and be well, there's, and would want to protect his standing as a businessman so he's like right. i will abide by the rules right. you know yeah and there's precedence obviously the whole first ghostbusters movie is about uh, them being regulated by uh, the uh, environmental protection agency right. um <laughs> <laughs> and uh mr walt peck and yeah, uh, not maybe... trying to go down that road of getting right. in a fight with them anymore <laughs> um okay so real quick everybody i'm putting a link into the chat this is our giveaway for the HasLab pke meter and trap all you have to do is fill out that form that i just linked and subscribe to this channel that you're watching right now and you will be entered all right. And if you're watching this after the fact and you can't find the form, uh, the video is on our channel. It's like our third video uh, from this week. Uh, and uh, it's really easy. We're just doing it because we are trying to grow this community and build out the love for Ghostbusters. And, um, you know, we appreciate everybody being here. So fill out the form. All oh, we need your name, your email address and uh, make sure you sub to the channel and you will be entered to win. OK, let's let's keep rolling here because we're already at an hour and I don't want to go too much further. OK, so here's the shot of Peter. And I, here's the thing. 
I've seen a lot of people saying, oh, Peter looks so worried and so scared, which he does. But also it's Bill Murray. That could <laughs> easily, just as easily be a, a Bill Murray comedic take about to happen you know that could easily be vankman being like oh i shouldn't have ate that chili <laughs> right right you just never know. i want to point out he's not wearing a proton pack he's yeah. not <laughs> i can't he's believe like, it nope sorry i'm not putting it on <laughs> i can't believe it um, if anybody's wearing a has lab pack in this movie i expect it to be bill murray right <laughs> we're well we all saw the story of the 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 gbs in scotland following bill around the golf course <laughs> get their their has lab pack bumpers signed and he's like what the hell is this <laughs> so anyways are we all going to scotland to stalk bill murray next year come on guys come on we might have to we might have to <laughs> yeah it's so funny um okay were we surprised to see bill murray in this trailer even though we all yeah. assumed he'd have some involvement in the movie I was surprised to see him inside the firehouse a little bit. I've had a running joke that I thought he would just kind of, he would make zoom calls from Cortland. Yeah. Like the SUNY Cortland is not close <laughs> to New York city. It's like a good six hour drive. So he would have just been like, Hey guys. And like fired up zoom and made some, gave, gave some advice and was a bit, a little bit of like the guy in the van, but over on zoom instead, but I'm glad he's there. I don't, by no means am I sad about it. I think Jim's told me that theory enough that I also expected Started that. believing it. <laughs> hey, Cosmos says, uh, sorry potential, john potential <laughs> no, vankman good. quote potential vankman quote winston it spiked me <laughs> yeah I, um, I think i'm surprised we see bill but the but it doesn't seem like the trailer is hanging anything on it on, right. on yeah. him. like they're not using him they're not it's just yeah. a quick glance and then we're moving on right i think that's right. my favorite part like it's 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 kind of reinforcing that thing that I think Ivan said a long time ago, it might've been like a bonus feature or an interview, one of the other movies, but he said like ghostbusters can be about any group of people. Like any four people can make a team of ghostbusters. And now we're finally, you know, we're introducing new characters. The OGs will always be that foundation, their knowledge, their expertise, their experience will always be beneficial and will matter. And ghostbusters wouldn't exist without it but it's not about them. It's about ghostbusters and there are clearly more ghostbusters. So yes, they're here. They matter. That will always be continuity, but it's not about them. Right. 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 Yeah. And I was at, but the thing that I was surprised about is in that synopsis where it's based, it flat out says the original ghostbusters have opened up a new laboratory for ghostbusting research and their team. Like it's, it's not, it doesn't have to hide anything like, right. right? Like it, it can lean into it. I think it's not special that they're here. It's like, of course they're here. They're of course they're like, here. And like, it's just weird because it's like, I feel like everybody has seen afterlife, but only you kind of get that, that feeling from the general public this week when you read comments is like, maybe they, maybe a lot of people haven't right. Like, I don't know. It's weird, but the people, the people who have, you know, like you said before, Craig, it's, it's been, hugely positive reaction to the trailer but there's been a lot of people who are like this looks really good i never saw the last one and then people coming out of the woodwork to be like the last one was really good you should check it out right mm -hmm. right mm -hmm. yeah well i mean listen for for better or for worse uh ghostbusters has had a weird uh you know last 10 years and <laughs> uh it's just been crazy. So it feels like finally we're getting to a point where we could just have fun. And and I think mm. more than anything, I want my Ghostbusters movies to be fun, right? Yeah. So, yeah. yeah. Uh, Matt, anything else on uh, Bill here? No, I just, uh, from the autograph standpoint, he's in this film and I'm trying to limit the amount of things I need him to sign from it. So, <laughs> oh yeah, you guys have a reverse reaction because you're trying to complete cast posters. So the second Bill Murray gets added, it, it immediately makes your task. It's 10 times so harder. bittersweet, man. <laughs> oh, I get it. I get it. Yeah. Listen, that's funny. We're going to get Bill on the podcast one of these days. <laughs> oh my gosh. That's didn't you, or Craig, like as soon as Bill's on the podcast, that's when it ends. That's the last episode. <laughs> It'll be our last episode for sure. There's no, there would be no way to top that. So, um, okay, let's uh, let's keep chugging along here. Uh, oh my gosh, we have an animated lion, uh, not and scaring. Looks like Ray. I mean, let's be yeah. honest. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's his jacket. Yeah, with the so, brown collar. What what were your, what was everyone's reaction to this? Tom, we'll start with you. If, if that's okay. Uh, I loved seeing the library again. And what yeah. I didn't realize it was Dan until 
I don't know, my third or fourth time. And then when I realized that I was, I was excited because as we talked about earlier, hearing Dan read anything is fantastic, but seeing Dan out in the thick of it, out in the field, I think that's going to be really something special and not a field of wheat. That was also special, but (laughs) I also like the idea, like, do we think this line becomes a full roaring, insane, crazy ghost line? Or is it just like when you bother your cat who's sleeping, it just kind of snaps on (laughs) you and goes goes back to its own thing. I um, I know. would love for it to be a whole crazy ghost line. And the fact that Ray looked like it looks like he's he's unarmed. And I would assume like if if the scene where he's explaining the death chill and Phoebe's like, what's that? And all that is taking place in the library. Maybe this is them leaving the library. Right. And none of them look like they went there with the idea of like, we're investigating. We're going to bust some ghosts while we're here. So who knows what this could lead to like that just feels chaotic and i love it and also crazy because they did not film at the library you know wow right yep so it's just it's just it it that to me make like you're not going to be thinking about that when you watch the movie but just stepping out of it for a second it is amazing what they can do you know so yeah i'm trying to figure out the connection too like how is this connected to the death chill, the frozen, is this something else? Is this part well, of a montage? Is like, how, how does this I fit had, into the story? How does this fit into the story of like maybe the first Ghostbusters and how you go back all the way to like Eleanor Twitty? Yeah. But if you're like to, to extend the library and ghost, like for a second, let's assume just to make everybody happy that the Ghostbusters, the video game is canon. Oh, um, but, but <laughs> there was a backstory in the video game that had me, me, like me. her. <laughs> <laughs> There was a but there was a backstory to that character, right? That's been given to us at different points about yeah. not just there was a librarian that you know, or just a ghost in the library, but that was a librarian who was researching, uh, you know, darker stuff and sort of yeah. basements of the library. So, right. I mean, there could cool. be glue that's connected there. Who knows? Jake yeah. Jake thinks I'm totally wrong and is asking me to stop in the comments. But. <laughs> well, but I do think Jim, I do think that to, to your you know, it could be that not that the game is canon, but just that idea right. of like places that have some bit of haunted history to them in the city. I mean, think about it. I would be inclined to believe that as this ice creature is coming through and causing this storm and, and ice spikes to pop up in New York. I don't think that's all just water. Like there's probably whether or not it's like some percentage of ectoplasm or it's just spectral energy involved. Like that is enveloping the city. So whether or not this thing has any sort of personal haunted history that would influence it, to become possessed just the fact alone that all of this spectral energy is now just enveloping the city it could animate anything sure look i just want to point out to everybody that the beginning of the trailer began at the ocean which means it's entirely possible that we may see marine ecto-8 <laughs> oh god <laughs> hey the closest remember when john didn't you do a patch for that for ecto or for what is that i did called? yeah for, that was for awesome yeah. thank you i appreciate that, that i'm was so awesome. proud of it <laughs> and stay tuned for our special announcement about Ghostbusters Fan Fest 2. Just kidding. Oh, never happened. Never happened. <laughs> uh, okay, we've got this shot from inside of the firehouse mm. looking towards the doors. We've got two Ghostbusters facing said doors. Um, one has a this pack an- on. This was another one that when I saw it after like the second or third time and I was kind of freeze framing and noticing things, I freeze framed it. Cause I was like, Oh, this is a good glimpse at the, the changes to the pack. And then I looked at the, whoever it is on the, on the left side. And I was like, right. what are they doing? Right. And like, it's like, you can't see what it is. It could be a hundred different things, but to me, it clearly reads as like some sort of new weapon because they're pointing it at the door the same way the other person looks like they're ready to blast whatever comes through. Sure. And so it's just that feeling of like new, new gear, new stuff, new things are happening. Right. Yeah. And we won't go into too much detail, but there was that influencer person uh, who released a video yesterday that had a look at a lot of gear from the set. Yeah. Um, do we lose Tom? Oh, he's back. He's we did. He's trying to get back. I think he's having an audio issue. There he is. Come cool. back. Sorry. Oh, he's back. So yeah, we got this really cool shot here. Um, where uh, you know, then we see the doors blast uh open. And w- I didn't even notice this the first time, but the, the way the doors hit the sign is awesome. Mm-hmm. They, like, yeah, kind of I love that. Bang the sign a little bit. 
It also makes me wonder if maybe that's a shot where the effects aren't added because the doors blow out from the inside and maybe they're shooting at the doors. So maybe like the firehouse oh. is frozen shut and they're trying to get out. Oh, that's interesting. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, this is early, right? Like effects are in the very early stages. So I know that the first afterlife trailer to the second one, there was some updated effects. Um, mm. So here we got the ice kind of coming through. This looks to be inside the firehouse where the, where the Ecto is. Um, and then you've got this, this shot here, which by the We're way, in, our, in the background, somebody added me. Did you guys see that? <laughs> somebody sent me an image. They added me to, let me see if I can find it. It's pretty cool. <laughs> it's, it's pretty special. Um, God, I don't remember where it was. I got, to, I'll, I'll, I'll share it. Somebody added me wearing my slime blower next to Callie. Um, <laughs> part, I was part of it. Uh, the fact that somebody's spending their free time photoshopping. <laughs> there. Um, so obviously this is a huge threat and this is inside the firehouse and we got Gruberson and, and Finn and Callie here. So just really, really cool stuff kind of gives us, uh, you know, uh, uh, a look at the stakes of this movie. Yeah. And I think yeah, they're I, way heavier. Yeah. Yeah. hundred percent. I love it because again, and I, I keep bringing it up just cause like for me, I was born after the first movie came out. And so go, the real ghostbusters was my way into ghostbusters. And that sure. show is just as burned into my head as, as the films are. And so when, you know, Kumail comes out and he's like, Hey, this, you know, the real ghostbusters was, was a, a reference point and a, a touchstone for kind of like the vibe and the tone of this movie. You know, you can feel that in this, not th like, I don't think there's anything in it that directly references anything. The bad guy there, he's not from the real Ghostbusters, but just that feeling of like new gadgets, new uniforms, you know, heightened action. The firehouse itself is under attack, which happened a lot. And, you know, it's kind of an all hands on deck situation. I would, I, I hope Janine's in this movie. I don't know if she's in this trailer, but I would love to see her get in on the action. If she's there and, you know, in the cartoon, she always, when the firehouse got attacked, she was the first one to pick up a pack and be like, Oh no, not in my house and be right there with everyone else. Right. So Annie Potts has been tweeting. That feeling. She's, she's, you know, she's, she's been tweeting a little bit about it now. It was really cool. Like the way that it, it, um, it went down this week where none of the actors could participate on day one and then the strike ended. And then, so it was like, we got a second day. It's almost like maybe it'll, open up a new way to do marketing where it's like you get the first <laughs> the mainstream reaction and then the next day all because i mean that was another you know several yeah. million views from all of them right um, honestly you're right so um all right let's keep let's chug along here let's finish this up so we get this sh really cool shot of the containment unit mm -hmm. it's, stuff's going down the walls are cracking um great to see that uh you know clearly uh I don't know. They just, they, it's like they decided let's make the firehouse and every piece of the firehouse a real character in this movie. Yeah. Um, Which explains why they wanted to code name it that. Seems yeah, like it now, really does play a, a large all, part in it. It's all starting to make sense, guys. And since we know it's based <laughs> off like, you know, the real Ghostbusters vibe, I imagine that when, you know, or if that wall crumbles, as we see it start to crumble, that what's going to be behind it are a series of very, you know, scary floating rocks. They're all just right <laughs> behind that wall. Um, <laughs> it will be interesting. Like if that wall them. does break up, yeah. like in the, in the original movie, when they shut down the containment unit, you see the light start to come from behind it. So it, right. it, it almost makes it seem like whatever the inside of the containment unit is, it's right behind that wall. Right. But you know, it's, I love this kind of stuff. And I, and I love when they, you know, as as much as it would be bad for like one ghost or one entity or whatever to to take over New York or you know occupy New York or whatever, the idea that the containment unit fails and everything inside of it gets out, especially considering that now I think it's safe to assume that Gozer is in the containment unit, like right. that would be really bad. <laughs> right. <laughs> yeah. yeah. That think, also just, had to be a time consuming process. 190. Yeah. Just like one at a time. One. Dude. <laughs> Did we one? We can't miss one. I would have left all those traps in uh, Oklahoma. <laughs> this is your guys' problem. Um, okay, chugging right along, we get a really quick shot of Lucky. Um, in it's not really clear where she is in the firehouse or whatever, 
but I think now that we have that synopsis, she might be in the new like secret, secret lab. lab. Yeah. yeah. Uh, like that is a lab thing. to me. It looks like right. it, yeah. it really, I think that it, you might have said this the other night that this looks a lot like, or maybe Jake said it, that it sounds like, or it feels like Egon's lab. Um, yeah. The, oh, right, the vibe right. of it. So, or like um, the place that Egon's lab. Yeah. Oh, man. I love <laughs> Guys, I love toys. You know that about me. Um, okay. <laughs> Moving along here, we get this shot, which, by the way, mm. I totally missed this shot the first eight times I watched the trailer. It just didn't register at me what we were looking at. So, um, Tom, Matt, any any thoughts on, I mean, can, do we assume this is our, our, our big bad or one of the ghosts yeah. or what, what are we looking at here? I think that's absolutely a safe assumption. And I love, yeah. it's just like you could tell this guy or gal yeah. getting ready for battle. The, the horns clicking in, whether it's the artifacts or not. I've heard different people speculate that. Yeah. But it's a great, I, it's a great little clip. I yeah, think that was this is the moment too. things might go from like bad to worse. If it, if the horns are the artifact, just mm -hmm. that idea of like, if he is able to build a figure of himself, like right, he's right. Have <laughs> his full power accessible, you know, Th yeah. does this yeah. imply that the figures will be build a figure? That the, the <laughs> well, I mean, we, we a, he's huge B he's disconnectable and that's canon. It's, right. it's gotta be done. Right. There's going to be a fan home version that sends you parts once a month. You just get an issue and then <laughs> you get a leg and then you get a horn. Yeah. There's not a business right before you get the second horn. But I thought the same thing you were saying about, you know, is this the artifact? Like my mindset was that this could be a, an entity that shows up in, in order to reach its full power. Like what if these are some sort of psychic horns that let you project psychokinetic energy? And, mm. you know, so if you, once you get your hands he on it, you can reach, you know, do a lot. Yeah, like or a PK, not a meter, but um, an expeller, you know, a, yeah. I don't know, a projector. Some sort of antenna so, kind of thing. Um, then we get a shot of James A. Caster here. Yep. Uh, flashlight. Um, not a, a whole lot to pick shot. apart. And it's our first cool... shot of the now, now a magnificent, everyone needs it jacket. Um, There's a jacket here. By the coat. way, shout, we, I always have to say this. Obviously, we love Jason Reitman. We love Gil Kinnan. Um, Eric Spielberg shoots the crap mm -hmm. out of these movies, man. These yeah. are afterlife is a gorgeous beautifully shot film and obviously it looks like um this is going to be the uh same way um so we get little glimpses of the new characters here let's talk turtleneck. about this callie in a turtleneck and also paul rudd's a ghostbuster and mm -hmm. he's, yeah. his hair's shorter and he doesn't have a beard anymore and now he's a ghostbuster so quite a transition from from the last movie to this one but just so cool so I saw someone comment that uh, now the uh, the Hasbro selfie series bodies are now canon. Because <laughs> <laughs> well, now there's a reason for them to have a turtleneck, yes, right? <laughs> yes. Perfect. Perfect. Um, and then we got Phoebe there. And mm -hmm. then uh, there's a quick shot here of an elevator with Patton Oswalt <clears throat> closing the gate um, with uh, probably from the scene earlier, right? So we Phoebe and podcast are wearing the same attire, and then Dan's got that jacket on. So it's see, all I'm saying secret basement in the kinda... library. That's where this el this yeah. old timey elevator goes. Secret yeah. basement in the library. Totally. I mean, I could totally imagine him because, like, usually you walk into the library, there's the surface levels of like, oh, we got our books here, we got our kids stuff here, we got this here. And if you're trying to like let take me to the archives where I can learn more about the city. I would imagine it's like, cool, come downstairs with me, you know? Right. And you can only access it via this old service elevator. Yeah. By the way, guys, I know I told you we would do an hour and a half tops. We're coming up on that. So if for any reason you need to bail, that is not a problem. We'll, we'll probably, we probably have another seven or eight minutes in us. So um, just want to, I never, Hey, I've been held hostage as a guest on a show before. So I would <laughs> never want to do like, I'm like, Oh man, we're moving in. I hope it's me, Craig. <laughs> no, no, <laughs> definitely not extra plasm vodka. Uh, no, it was not. Um, okay, so we've got this shot of Kumau opening up what is like this door, and like you know the the one side of the door is very domestic, and there's paper towels and spices, and the other side there seems to be a lot of like ornate, gold plated somethings. Um, I don't know. Any thoughts? It would like fit that. Horn in there. Yeah, I mean, there's a horn in there, maybe, or yeah. it mm -hmm. would fit the vibe of like if this is that same room where we see the door get blown off, this could fit the vibe of like, mm -hmm. you know, a deep level secret collector. 
So it's like, interesting yeah. to me that it looks like the walls are it's not just there's stuff in there. It looks like the Ooh. walls themselves are decorated in like gold and metal. Mm -hmm. Ghost Beacon has an interesting idea in the chat. He said perhaps it's the back mm -hmm. of Ray's occult. Like perhaps it's actually mm -hmm. like the back room of it. That would kind of make That's some sense. Interesting. So that would be apothecary, not like a spice rack. So it'd be the weird wolf stain. Oh, but not the yeah, yeah. yeah. Like here's your eye of newt. Don't go behind there though. Like <laughs> interesting um man there's gonna be so much fun to unpack this is so cool can we get mm. another trailer guys come on all right so <laughs> the other thing, side yep. note the other thing that i thought because i think the first shot of camille in the trailer mm -hmm. i can't remember but i want to say there's like books behind him right and so that might maybe he is like a guy that is an assistant at ray's bookshop like if right. Ray's doing more interaction with the Ghostbusters now that they're back up and running, maybe he's kind of helping hold down the fort. And so this could be him being like, oh, yeah, I know the shop. Hold on. Ray might have something in the back. Right. Oh, boy. Mm -mm -mm. Oh, and uh, we've got um, Celeste behind him. Just, mm -hmm. Yeah. Just for just noting that. OK. All right. Then it cuts to Celeste. This is where uh, let's let's go to the audio real quick again. You see is your own tear ducts freezing up. All right. We got this really bad news <laughs> bears. She's Matt, getting death chilled. She's getting totally death chilled. Oh, I hate when that <laughs> happens. Um your own the last thing you see is your own tear ducts freezing up. This really creepy close up of uh you know Lucky's eye. Look mm -hmm. how scared Lucky looks. I feel own bad. Tear ducts you know, last time. <laughs> All, she's just working at a burger joint. Also, this family moves to town. Next day, she's a terror dog. <laughs> Stay away from these people. And then, um, she, but I mean, she still was like, you know what? I'm gonna go to New York and keep doing it. <laughs> right, right. Um, uh, wearing a pack, we see the uh, the the black and yellow stripes there on the pack again. And then uh, we we we've got the death chill here, in in action. And then this cut, this this is kind of the levity here, which is pretty funny stuff here. Literally scared to death. <laughs> so cool. Right. So, and then this really cool shot of Trevor uh, going casual with the pack on. Um, and that, that if you just notice, that pack right there does not have the caution striping mm -hmm. on the power cells. So just something uh, something to note. I was is trying to figure out. Grandfather's that. pack? Possibly, yeah. Absolutely. I wonder if it could also be that the new packs are maybe they pack a little bit more of a punch. So maybe mm. this is him. Yeah, I can't tell where he is. I don't think that's a spot in the firehouse, at least one that we've seen before. So I thought it could be uh, like eventually they're going to end up on the roof in this movie, we believe, because that's where this trailer goes. And that appears to be a okay. ladder that goes up through the ceiling. Mm. So I wonder if that was perhaps like a ladder that goes up into the attic or goes to the roof potentially um, mm. that has been pulled down. So, and there's ice on it already. So it's, you know, yeah. A I don't AJ know. made the point that I was going to work toward was that, you know, if, the, if he's using an older pack to get more used to it, maybe this is some sort of training facility that he's doing it in. I, God, I don't, I don't even know what to think anymore. <laughs> none, of this, none of this feels real. I feel like I'm about to wake up and be like, man, you think you, did Dan Aykroyd do any interviews? He mentioned Ghostbusters. <laughs> Gonna feel like <laughs> spring. Um, all right, so we got Trevor firing the pack. We got our title card, Ghostbusters Frozen Empire. We get this look here at the big bad. Come on, come on. That is so good. Very haunting. I love that it is in live action Ghostbusters outside of like the big manifestations, like, you know, stay puff or Rowan or whatever. Like this is the first non-human, like he's clearly not got human proportions. He is right. a purely demonic entity, oh, not so a awesome. person in a costume. Mm -hmm. So cool. There's nothing you really can say other than it's just cool. Mm -hmm. And whoever the, <laughs> and then you have to say no pun intended right after you say that. Ooh, yeah. cool. <laughs> Um, it's chilling, honestly. It's chilling. Um, Zach Myers, good point. It's cool to see all of the various close up shots of the packs in this and afterlife. That was never really a thing in the old movies. The gear was just mm -hmm. there. Yeah. Yeah. 
that's intentional. That's really cool. By the way, guys, at the very end, we will do some Q&A. So start getting your questions in the chat, your comments. We're almost done. Uh, we get this shot here. And then that, that money shot at the end with the four of them on the <laughs> roof with the jackets. And Hallie's got the ecto goggles. And it's just... The, the amount of uh, trailer reactions I've seen where people are watching the trailer, they're reacting to the trailer, they get to that shot of the bad guy, and like literally right on cue, their reaction to the bad guys, ho, 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 but then it cues right with this shot, and it's like, oh, wait, what's happening? Right. Isn't that I want a Hallmark ornament of this. That's a, I want a Hallmark ornament that is comes out for Christmas that pushes a button the on the corner. bottom, and it just has Paul Rudd going, ho, 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 in a red suit. <laughs> Are we sure? I mean, I know I keep bringing this up because I just love doing my dumb joke, but are we sure it's not Arnold Schwarzenegger's Mr. Freeze getting revenge <laughs> oh on the twin sequel getting canceled? On Jason <laughs> Reitman? I mean, I had to freeze the whole city. Jason Reitman, he, he canceled it. We was going to do twins too. And he canceled it. <laughs> what are you going to do, Jason? Make the Ghostbusters or the triplets? <laughs> <laughs> uh, nobody needs a twin sequel. Come on, Arnold. It's over. How we do. All right, it's that story is not complete. Right? Story's not over. <laughs> Be honest, you would have watched that movie. <laughs> it's money on the table. I don't even love the first one. I'm a kindergarten cop fan. I want to see first too. grade cop, the legacy sequel. Um, <laughs> all right, here we at man. Listen, whew. Paul Rudd's a Ghostbuster. If anybody was born, if anybody from this generation of comedians was born to be a Ghostbuster, it's Paul Rudd. A thousand yeah. percent. Yep. Um, this is funny. Uh, from Lazy Jade I Does Callie now acknowledge her love of science that she's using the gear? Yep, she has to. It's the rule. She likes science well, she doesn't now. She want to die. All right, that too. Yeah. <laughs> so everybody else Point gun, family. shoot ghost. I don't know science. This is it would way be kind better. of funny if she still had a grudge against science, but she was like, whatever, I'll still use this stuff. Yeah. <laughs> just like the whole movie. She's just begrudgingly being a she's, ghostbuster. <laughs> she's just like the most like, you know, down to earth. Like, how do I work this thing? Great. That's all I need to know. Thank you. I I'll it. tell you what, guys, I, I really, I think Carrie Coon is so awesome. And one thing I just love that they've, they've just cast really great actors and performers mm -hmm. in these movies. Oh, and yeah. it, it, it really elevates the, the potential of, of how good these movies are going to be. Who um okay let's um let's go to the chat for like five minutes and then we're gonna end this guys I can't thank you enough for being here thank you so much this was so much fun um obviously we got you know not it won't be like the afterlife buildup I mean pending any pandemics world wars and strikes I think we're we might be in the clear to actually see this movie at the end of March which is not that far knock away on, knock on something all right um <laughs> let's go to the chat eastwood says i have a thought did you know that this whole movie is described in ghostbusters 2 when you hear run dmc ghostbusters the lyrics match what dan says in the trailer interesting was that <laughs> i have to go back and read the lyrics to the run dmc ghostbusters it's, song it's just the one line that says chills down your spine your heart fills with fright <laughs> oh but then the next line is, it says you get the death chill <laughs> <laughs> right um soul of the mind says uh i think what makes me happy is that this is a new story yes uh, nothing unoriginal and all new yeah i think mm -hmm. i think that's what everybody i think we all took afterlife and, and we we experienced it and you know we had terror dogs and gozer and it was great and it was it was it was nice to see and now we have this new world to go into yeah, yeah that, I mean, that the was, last movie needed was... to resolve things for us it needed to like yeah resolve a wait of 37 years or something yeah. uh, and kind of close and end some stories to let us tell some new ones. So that's great. And I, I love that like Ghostbusters is still relatively new in terms of like what it's built up for the franchise. And there's no reason to start cannibalizing itself and like just reusing Boogeyman <laughs> or Sam Hain or anything like the sure. movies have so much space to just come up with tons stuff, and tons right. of new lore before it's like wouldn't it be great if we threw what, this thing in there and the and this question you know who do you want to see show up having those little background ghosts or one-off busts or something be where it's like oh but i recognize that that's where you can have some fun. right well bug eye ghost the kenner if they if listen if they're gonna have another kenner ghost do a cameo it's got to be fearsome flush it has yeah to be. man <laughs> 
I'm going to agree with that. Although I said um, when the teaser for a teaser came out at Halloween, there was like howling uh, wolves and bats flying. And my suggestion was that that meant that, that because we already got Bug Eye Ghost as a precedent, this means we should expect the Wolfman and Kenner Dracula <laughs> from the Monster sure. series in this movie. So, yeah. I mean, well, listen, I can- if, if you could get the rights to the Universal Monsters and basically do Ghostbusters versus the Monster Squad. That would like, be amazing. That would, that would be, <laughs> it would be amazing. Uh, Bill Barclay says, when do you think the full trailer will come out since the movie comes out end of March? It's hard to say. I mean, I don't think we'll get another one this year. Um, I said this the other night. It might finally happen after, you know, I made this joke. Like people have been wanting a Ghostbusters Super Bowl trailer forever. Even at times <laughs> where there's like no Ghostbusters movie. And you think we'll get a trailer at the Super Bowls? Like, what are you talking about? There's there's no movie. I Super Bowl late January, early February makes sense to me. Any other thoughts on that? Yeah, I, I think that's yeah. accurate. It's good Super timing. I, I think that spaces it out to then have, you know, the rest of February and March just be, you know, TV spots and, and right. shorter things that start popping up and really ramping up to the release. Right. It's also it's also weird for us to refer to this as a teaser trailer because I feel like it is so much more than just a teaser trailer. <laughs> so when people ask for the full trailer, I feel like we got a pretty it's like, full what you, trailer. What are you talking yeah. about? <laughs> yeah, I agree. I've heard this too. Like it's only a teaser, and I'm like, it's over two minutes long. Right. Yeah. Like, yeah. Most like a teaser to me is usually like, here's 30 seconds of a taste to go. Here's a yeah. logo. Here's a title, and get you to go. Oh, this is coming. No, this right. tells me there's like plot details here. I'm yeah. Um, if there was. Like if people were looking for that kind of barn teaser or something, I think that would have come with like, you know, that would have been three months ago at least. And it would have just been like somebody noticing that they could see their breath and then reacting to something off screen. Right. Makes sense to me. Um, Ghost, by, uh, by the way, Madam Web, which is a big Sony temple release. I mean, I don't know if it's a temple. It comes out in February, but it's a Sony, Mar- Sony Marvel movie. comes out February 16th. So I, w- I would imagine okay. around that time we could see another full That's trailer. Like a, yeah, that makes sense. That would be like a final trailer kind of right. thing. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, right. Ghostbusters. Yeah. That also stars Celeste O'Connor. It does. Yeah. She's one oh. of the main characters in it. Yep. Dude, that's called synergy. And I love it. A <laughs> <laughs> um, couple more and we're done. Ghostbusters Collector. What kind of budget do you think this film has? 25 like, bucks. I have no idea. <laughs> I mean, the last one was somewhere around. And films are slipping. Eighty million. Here's my theory on film budgets. I don't think anybody ever actually has any idea what they're talking about when it comes no. to budgets. One thing people need to remember is in Hollywood, there's a lot of private investors and small. You know, these movies are funded in a lot of different ways. So, how much money is Sony putting up? I don't think it's a two hundred million dollar movie, but I'm sure it's in the hundred to hundred to forty million dollar range. I don't know. Um, I have no idea. Uh, let's see. Uh, T. Johnson. Any chance a caster is playing Oscar? I don't believe so. I don't think so. I don't think I so. Not. I don't think so. I hope uh, Oscar's living his best life far away from the stuff that plagued his mom. Right. Exactly. Like, <laughs> I um, hope Oscar's on the beach. <laughs> not Dave, that one though. <laughs> Dave McCauley. It's a pity the release date isn't in June for 40th anniversary celebrations. Yeah. Here's the thing. I was thinking anniversaries are very much, it's a marketing thing. That is only yeah. for that. We're going to see 40th anniversary, you know, DVD box sets. Yeah. In fact, you're probably going to see a nice 40th anniversary four pack. Uh, that includes, you know, this movie's going to be out on, on DVD in June. So it's going to come in yeah. a containment unit shaped box, but in or the United anything, States, it'll light up and in other markets, it won't. And then everyone yeah. will go nuts about <laughs> it. <laughs> I can also imagine them doing like a, Hey, not only is this when it's, you know, coming out in June on, on Blu-ray and DVD, but also it's going to get like a limited re-release because it's going to be showing alongside the original, you know, for that, for that celebration or something. I like that. Oh, um, two more and then we're done. Uh, what do you hope the runtime is for Matt? five hours yeah <laughs> i hope i have to come back two days to see the whole thing yeah it's, you know you start it's like a double header but you have to go take an intermission I, yeah i don't oh know two two hours two two fifteen yeah you know, I, say I think that sounds good. Yeah. yeah i felt like 205 i think was the runtime on afterlife and i felt like it was just a tad short like i think some of us were like well there could, they could have done two a couple more. more things in there yeah but i think 215 would be nice that would be good yeah Last one for tonight, guys. Bill Barclay, like Afterlife, will this one have a mid or uh, end credit scene? Um, Maybe. Probably. Yeah, I would imagine so. 
what right? movie doesn't at this point um that's right. in a franchise you know stuff. so yeah. um i would hope so it's a really <clears throat> great way to set up the future and get excited or maybe if something gets cut from the movie uh but they still that's fun but it maybe slowed down the plot or something they can include it in the after i don't i think after credits can i don't think it i, I like when it's just something fun it doesn't have to yeah. be like the thing it, it's gotten so boilerplate with marvel that it's yeah. just like whatever so i and like the first it, one like, from marvel was just shawarma like it was right. just like hey they're eating well, shawarma was, that's hilarious yeah so i think and that was nice too because it was kind of like you know that was the payoff to phase one and so to have the final after credits of phase one be like hey we did it let's get some food like <laughs> that was great that's how like, i feel me, I, if you're gonna do an end credit scene make it matter like don't just have it be like you could have just put that in the movie like have it be something that's either the final nail in the coffin of relieving the tension like the shawarma thing or it's something that makes you go like oh and now i'm really excited for the next one Sure. Uh, last one for real this time. Jason Grahowski, where's the premiere party, New York or LA? <laughs> Listen, Man, well, it's going to be in London just to make us all mad. Yes, no, oh, I, no. I, I, yeah. Listen, <laughs> last time for Afterlife, they did the big premiere in New York City. YHS had a a party uh, the night before. Uh, Tom, you were there. John, you were there. Jim and Matt, I hope you're at the next one because it is very much our intention to do something like that again um whether or not it's going to be the same thing or something different who knows it, it, a lot of it depends on when the premiere is if there's a fan event attached to the premiere and location right um having said all that i would bet on new york right kind of makes it sense. just went so well last time mm -hmm. the went well. in there yeah and the it'll, it'll be a nice kind of like slightly post winter slightly warmer than the depths of winter weather right. kind of thing going on so right and it's well, it's a it's a movie happening in new york yeah so it's to me that like they would take the you know the premiere there given it yeah you know it's a new york movie all right listen guys here we go Thank you, everybody, for being here. We very much appreciate the support. We've done a lot of content this week. There's going to be more coming down the pipeline. Jim, Extra Plasm Podcast, I'm assuming you're going to have a full trailer breakdown next week? Oh, yeah. So uh, Tuesday, we have an episode coming out discussing the trailer with a panel of uh, Jason Fitzsimmons from Ghostbusters News, as well as uh, Tony Taylor and Brendan Pierce uh, from uh, Phantasm and Toys and Baducci Studios. So sweet, they'll sweet. be joining the podcast uh, over the weekend and we'll be releasing that on Tuesday. Uh, so take a look for that and you can find that wherever podcasts are slung um, or cast, whatever, but just, you know, iTunes, wherever you get podcasts. So yeah. Um, Eastwood, you're welcome. He says we're entertaining. Can you believe it? Right. We did it. Um, <laughs> Good job, guys. Nice job you. you did there. Thank you, Go Speaking. Uh, John Yerkeba, uh, where people can follow you is what they want to know. So tell them. Yeah, um, you can see it, the little subtitle under my name. It is that across all social media, just John your K before. Um, pardon my dog, she's being weird. Um, but yeah, that, you know, Instagram, Twitter, uh, all that kind of stuff. And yeah, like you said earlier, I'm already I'm already fired up and inspired by everything we've seen from from this movie so far. So I'm I'm drawing my my life away, giving it cool. all to Ghostbusters and and I'm I'm pumped. Cool. I should have said that too. At Extraplasm on all the social medias. So yes. if you're looking for it, it's Tom, in your turn past. Matt, we talked about <laughs> the what did he say? His turn past. Turn past. Yeah. It's I'm over. getting it back. I'm <laughs> stealing my over. time back. Claiming my time. <laughs> Tom and Matt, we, we talked about the containment unit earlier. You guys not only are doing Ghostbuster signings, you're branching out into oh, other yeah. fandoms. We've got uh the, the Jurassic Park signing with Joseph Mazzello. Is that a, that's his name, right? Yep. First mm -hmm. time. It took a long time to get it here. It may not happen again. He's never done a signing. So if you want Joseph Mazzello, little Tim from Jurassic Park, check out TCU Collectibles. Awesome, awesome. And you guys, I just want cannot plug you guys enough. You've done signings with Logan Kim. We're going to have McKenna Grace. You've had Ernie Hudson. You've done Paul Rudd. You've done so many cast and crew of Ghostbusters. Truly a service. And then you've got your mystery autograph boxes coming back. The return. Those are going to be fun. Yeah, Ooh, Matt and I are wait. cutting back. You know, over the, the past few years, we've collected a lot and we've 
looked in our own collections. And so the mystery boxes are going to be primarily things from our collections. Okay. So there's some names we you would never we've never had, but you'll right. see in a box. Sweet. As a former mystery box customer, I want to say that was a lot of fun. And it's a thing people should get in on because I really enjoyed getting mine. And you did a great job putting them together. There was a great presentation to it. It wasn't just a box of stuff. So thank you. Well, right. thanks. No more wax seals this time because I burned the crap out of me. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> oh, no. All right, guys. Here's the deal. I'm going to do one last plug. Ready? YHS Podcast. We've been doing this for almost eight years. Instagram, Twitter, at YHS Podcast. I mean, X, whatever you call that other thing. Uh, you can find our Facebook group, Group Therapy. YHS Group Therapy is a lot of fun. Patreon.com slash yes, have some. For as little as $5 a month, you get all the bonus content, including exclusive access to the Discord, where the Frozen Empire chat has been on fire. And next week, we are going to do one of our classic YHS unrecorded Zoom hangs exclusively from Patreon, <laughs> where you might even get a little, I don't know, you never, you never know what you're going to learn at a YHS Zoom hang. So we <laughs> we have a ton of fun. The support is incredible. We have a great run up to this movie and we hope you guys subscribe to the channel and stay tuned for more from Yes Have Some Podcasts. For Ghostbusters Radio Live, my name is Craig Goldberg. Shout out to my partners in crime, Abigail Gardner and Jacob Walsh, who are not here tonight. And of course, Ryan Dole from Toy Anxiety. And for Jim, John, Tom and Matt and the entire Ghostbusters community, congratulations. We're not Star Wars. There's no... <laughs> There's no, there's no stress in the Ghostbusters world anymore. Everything's oh, great. We, we made it through the entire show without getting controversial. <laughs> oh, God. Yeah, well, anyway. Picking okay, a fight everybody. on the way out the door. I know, I know. All right, cool. Bye, everybody. I'm going to play the music here in one second, I think. There it is. All right. Bye. 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 Yeah. The music's not playing. We're just going to end it. Bye. I'm going to keep waving. Just keep waving.